everyone, welcome back to Four Teachers. Today we are going to have a talk all about VR or virtual reality and ways that you can use it in the classroom. We were so privileged and lucky that we got invited to a VR centre a few weeks ago. We were contacted by a company called Pladium, which is a virtual reality centre in Hong Kong. We were asked if we wanted to go and try out all of the new VR games that they've got. Some of them were perfect links for education, but some of them are perfect links for teaching. Others were just a little bit of fun, but we thought we would share our little experience with you today. Talk to you a little bit about virtual reality and talk about how it might be used in a classroom very, very soon. The first type of game that we played was a job simulator, which had really nice impact for our kids. If you think they were going to go into different roles, yeah. you could actually pin them in this game yeah. and see how it went. I was the first one to try the VR. Um, Ryan was guiding me. <laughs> uh, just briefly, so you'll see Katie's wearing the helmet and she has uh, sound in her ears yeah. and she's got a visor over her face with a screen in it and she's got in her two hands she's got a selecting pad they're like little gloves so whatever she grabs yeah. it will grab it in the virtual world the simulation first took me into a virtual job center where I was able to select the job that I wanted to do you can definitely pick up utensils and food and ingredients and it will give you a little tab just like in a restaurant it'll say can you make two eggs and toast yeah. and then you have to fry those eggs and but make the toast in the toaster. Yeah. What I liked about it is not a running around virtual reality world, so it's quite stationary, but you can move anywhere and pick up anything and interact with anything yeah. in that little room. I found it really hilarious and Ryan was laughing because I was just terrible at cooking in real life and in the <laughs> virtual world. So as you can see here, I'm trying to connect the uh, I'm trying to cook a meal, I'm using the kettle to fill up the water, then I've got to add a tea bag to the mug, I've got to put it all on the plate, I've got to toast the crumpets, and I've got to present this order ready for collection. If you've got children that are particularly interested in sort of those simple day-to-day -day tasks and just creation or playing house, I think it's really good to let them try something like this because it was a great opportunity to follow instructions. Like I'd not really thought of it like playing house but I think it's like the next step up, it's like taking your imagination to another level and it's really different to just a computer game mm -hmm. that we might be familiar with, it's way more immersive. What I liked about it was to give you enough variety you could kind of move things so the fridge you could turn another knob and it would become a cupboard and then uh, the toaster would pop up and become a blender and then a kettle and you could choose yeah. different items even though you were within one confined space a lot could happen within that room. Yeah, I think I have this vision in my head that maybe 10 years from now or perhaps even sooner maybe classrooms will have a virtual reality setup. I know that the goggles are particularly expensive right now but all technology is when it first comes out so maybe five years from now it might be quite normal to have like a role play area for children in the corner and it's got like virtual reality goggles that you can use and it will show a different world so if you were learning about the rainforest the children could take a trip through the rainforest if you were learning about a different country maybe the children could explore that country i think the possibilities with this vr technology are pretty much endless so my school we already have vr goggles um but we use them for like 360 videos so they're they're not interactive and i think what this next element is is interactive because you can use your joypad controllers or your hand grips and you can pick things up and move them yeah. and um, they're quite tactile in that world so I think that's another step up. Yeah and it's the fine motor skills as well of being able to sort of click and collect items and move them from A to B. I think it made me feel very in tune with my own body movements because once you've strapped in and you've got the goggles on and you've got these things in your hands you have to be very careful because the walls are still around you but you can't see the walls in the game. Yeah I think it was really exciting when you can things like you can throw things into the distance and see how far you can throw things or <laughs> I you, did could, a lot of that. you could have a drink of the products while you were making things and I thought that was really fun. It was yeah. really cool. I think was it quite funny for you to watch me in this world? Yeah so on this particular game that I can watch it through a tablet where I can see exactly uh, the room layout that Katie could see but I could also see her playing around it right in front of me 
and doing those things and sometimes it's just funny to see that like you're doing crazy things in yeah. real life that have an impact on the screen yeah i think i just went really giddy like i knew i was gonna have fun doing it but i just didn't realize how real it would feel it was like being in an actual kitchen i can imagine children not only thinking this is the best thing ever but also learning a lot of skills through it yeah i'm just laughing because it didn't look like the most real kitchen like it was all bright and pink and colorful but <laughs> no. i guess it looked like a katie kitchen that was my world ryan <laughs> Following this game, Ryan then had a go at- he went to the virtual job centre. <laughs> so I finally got a job at the job centre. <laughs> what job did you choose? Uh, so I was a mechanic of course and it was amazing. So I think for me I just kind of got to grips with how it looked in a kitchen and then it was a completely different world for the mechanics so people would come in with their car and they'd want me to try and fix their car so I'd have to take the wheels off. One car was strange, can you remember the lemon one? <laughs> That's a fun. I had to like de-lemon a car, so it had like 10 different lemons <laughs> hidden on it. Like one in the boot, one in the under the glove compartment yeah. things. I had to go in every compartment and like get rid of the lemons and just throw them away. So I, that's why I thought mine wasn't realistic, but it was really fun. <laughs> was there a stage in your VR where you had to attach like a horn to the exhaust? Like I feel like it was really strange request. Yeah, they weren't asking me just to fix things, it was like to improve. And it was like, how is the horn going in the exhaust going to improve it? So. <laughs> For me though, it did feel really tactile, so you can feel things when you attach them, you almost get like a rumble in your pack maybe a little bit as well. <laughs> <laughs> there were loads more jobs and loads that you could do with just that simulation, so that was like a job simulator yeah. uh, or like task simulator. It was kind of never ending what you could do, yeah. like and how fun it I could be. I think also we could have spent a really long time in this world, we did want to have a little try of all the different um, games that they had in the centre. but. I have this vision of if it was part of your classroom then each child could maybe have like a job selection they could try one each week and it's like your small world that we have mm. in classrooms right now where we set up a role play area but it just felt very very real and I think maybe we can have a little talk about like the safety of becoming so involved with a virtual world in a minute but it didn't feel unsafe it just felt like the children would just have a really nice time learning in that kind of environment like it'd be really different and really forward thinking for them yeah I can imagine though that people might be worried that you spend all your life inside one simulation yeah rather than having a real job or learning to read and write it's like wow my kid just made virtual toast and eggs <laughs> Yeah, I think it's a whole discussion, isn't it, whether VR is going to be safe to implement all the time in schools or whether students will stop feeling like a connection with reality, but for that 15-20 minutes that I spent inside that virtual kitchen, I feel like I learnt a lot. I feel like I had a really good like, immersive experience, which I think would be something that children would really, really enjoy and benefit from doing as well. So, game number two, <laughs> do you want to tell us a little bit about it? Yeah, game number two was I probably my least favourite because I'm not, I wasn't very good at it, but I uh, think you were really good at it. I think only, I think, well, basically our game next one was a co-op game, so the person would play, but then the second player could help them out a little bit yeah. by watching the screen and give them a few hints and directions. So I think I had the benefit that I was co-op player to uh, the first round. So I kind of had a better sense of what to do, and it's just basically like a shoot 'em up. Yeah, I, I suppose like you're gonna look at this game and you're gonna think we're just having a really funny time shooting ghosts, and obviously it's the kind of thing children talk about. They want to do this all the time, but the co-op element made it more of like an experience for partners so person a takes control of actually shooting the ghosts in the game and person b has to help instruct and tell the person where to go and what to do so that kind of guidance element to this game is why i think it could be a useful thing to use in the classroom as well because it was kind of a team game as well yeah, I was thinking in terms of like an assessment for it, you could say, well, we learn uh, left, right and language yeah. of position, or you could learn compass directions. However you want to tweak that game, you could definitely learn something from it as been the, the co-op player. It is really fun to do yeah. the, uh, the shooting inside the ghost. So you're kind of in a haunted house. Yeah. You've got your laser to kind of attack them Ghostbuster style and zap them, or you could send extra bombs and things yeah. like that. It was scary, but not too scary. <laughs> yeah. I also think that the, so after Ryan and I finished this game, there was a real sense of like camaraderie, like the two of us together, we were like, yeah, like, because I, when, when I went, I got like a really low grade and I failed, but then the time that Ryan went through with the game, like we improved, we had a little talk, we talked some tactics, and then we did really well that second round, and I feel like if you were doing team building with children as well, and like partnership and trying to build each other up and support each other, it was a really nice skill for that kind of thing. Yeah, and I think it's a nice way of doing it rather than just doing in Fortnite when you can co-op someone you've never met before and yeah. you can hear everything that they're saying. It might not necessarily be as safe, whereas this is a much safer environment that you're going to pair kids up to play this game and you know their language is going to be safe mm -hmm. and controlled. 
Definitely, and then you have that person like overseeing it as well and you can view it back so you could talk about I gave you instructions and I said to turn left but you turn right or I don't know you can definitely unpick the game a little bit more and you can definitely talk about like tactics and how to improve and build on those skills for the second time you play it through I think that's where we're gonna win if we're gonna use virtual reality as teachers because the children are going to love it but also the teachers can love it too because you're going to have their like they're going to want to do this and not realize the amount of skills that they're learning as well okay so moving on to uh <laughs> game number three what do we call this game um i don't know what the actual name was but it was definitely my favorite yeah i really love this one but this was probably the least likely to help with your teaching yeah i feel like this was like a wild card like the game we've got coming up after this stick around we're going to talk about one more that was really educational but this one was just kind of a wild card like a really really fun immersive battle environment that we were sent into so we're getting set up with the different games now. So we're gonna play both together. Yeah, I think what's often hard for VR is to get that sense of movement, and this one was amazing. So it was kind of a shoot 'em up, a bit like the ghost one. So robots sort of emerge and emerge, and you could shoot them uh, in different ways and reload your guns and use your triggers again. Yeah. But the best thing about this, which we love, is the teleport function. Yeah. So you had in your left hand almost like an arc, like a rainbow, and wherever that rainbow ended, anywhere in that maze that you were in, you could teleport to, as mm -hmm. long as you could see it. So you'd teleport and then you could turn around and shoot from a different position. So it actually felt like you were moving through a different environment. Yeah. And I think that's probably the next step for VR really, to have a good sense of movement and travel, and to actually be able to travel from different places and interact with the people you saw. Yeah. Cool. Because Ryan and I were stood quite close to one another, but you know that you can't really walk far in VR right now. Maybe there's some places where you can, but we didn't have too much distance around us so yeah. they have to create a way to make it seem as though you can travel around the world and I think they did that really well with the sort of click transport method that they included within the game. Yeah, we just loved it that you could teleport around a full maze and you felt yeah. like you were getting further away from each other and if you wanted to like hang out again you could teleport closer yeah. to each other and, and join in and work together or you could actually be further apart and go on a little side quest. Yeah. I nice. think the communication element of this game is probably what makes it the most educational because we would confer so we kept meeting back up in the centre and then there was parts where I would say right I'm gonna go get the guys at the top like the drones that are flying in I'll take charge of that and then you travel to the left and keep watch of the door and there was a lot of sort of teamwork and co-op going on like we had to discuss our tactics because we played the game mm. through twice and the second time we played it through we did so much better than the first. Yeah, I think in terms of dialogue and communication, those kind of skills you're building all the time, that's awesome. Yeah, and I think you can also play, like, was it up to four players on that one? There was like, yeah, more opportunities for small groups, so if you were thinking of booking a school trip, maybe you could take a small group of children to try this kind of activity. But as you can see from the clips right now, we were just loving it. Yeah, that was <laughs> the most fun one to play, I think. It felt like you had the biggest sense of scale of where you could go and yeah. what you could do. I feel like we could have probably spent all day in that world, yeah. which is worrying. Yeah, they let, us, they let us spend a long time in there. <laughs> so the last game was like a big virtual Microsoft Paint. For me, this one was even not so much as a game, it was more like a piece of software that yeah. Google had created, which I thought was really cool. But what made it quite special is that it was quite three-dimensional, so I was able to paint and draw, but then navigate around my drawing so I could see it from a different angle and use all different art mediums in order to create a really nice piece of artwork. Yeah, so in terms of digital art, you were not just creating a flat 2D image, you could create a 3D sculpture or a structure. Katie kind of, in the pictures you'll see, she kind of created one giant rainbow, like a neon rainbow, and then started using tape to it's like so build pretty, the structure. Isn't it? So it's really nice and it does glow and things, but I feel like we didn't get into the whole in depth of you could actually create a landscape or you could create mm -hmm. um, a scene that you are inside of. So you could create trees and you can build them from the ground up and build them up higher and higher. Mm -hmm. You could build buildings and could create furniture, something that you could walk around and actually feel. In terms of design, that was amazing. I've never seen anything like that I know, before. I've never either. And if your school is a school that's managed to embrace and use things like Minecraft within education, and you're looking for like the next level now because your children have kind of cracked Minecraft and you know, you've used it for a few education projects, this could be like the next thing for you, using a form of virtual reality to create like blocks that you can move. And if you can see in the picture, I've created a dress that could be worn. So it sort of moves into your sort of textiles and clothing design. And I think it was just a really exciting opportunity to 
create something like this it was a really like I don't know such an inspiring project and I know I didn't utilize it well and I was just being a bit silly and like playing with the different art mediums but like Ryan says there's so many ways that you could use this for education and there's so many things coming out for virtual reality that I didn't even know about before taking this trip. I think one thing that all these games have in common is that kind of communication. So if you're trying to struggle to communicate your ideas, like if you're a fashion designer, typically people draw 2D images or they'll have to make a mock-up design, but imagine how creative that would be just to get straight in and like mock up your dress and like it's all different textiles and it's all in 3D. Oh. And then that is your communication. You've got you've managed to like sell your idea and you can show other people what it's like and people can step into your world and see it from all different angles. I think that's amazing. You could do like a show, couldn't you? You could have like an exhibition of your products and ideas. Given that not everyone is able to just express themselves with like a pen and paper, mm. and there are children that much prefer to express themselves through like virtual reality, like this could be a really nice way of combining several different subjects for them. Yeah, and then moving on to like game design and things then very much that would be like you could actually create your characters and your avatars and you could create their clothing yeah. in the game and then people could choose which one they want yeah. and stuff like that, that would be awesome. Also when we're talking about like motivation for children and the kind of thing that they really want to do, a lot of children do say they want to be game designers, a lot of children do say they want to work with video games or computer software and the thing is the world is heading in that direction, there's a lot more technology available these days for children than ever before, so if we want to be really savvy as teachers and really encouraging as teachers we should be saying let's get on board with this, let's try and incorporate it within our curriculum and see what amazing benefits we can take from the use of virtual reality in schools. Thank you so much to the staff at Palladium for inviting us to come and take a look around. We had such an amazing time visiting. If you would like more information about using VR or if you would like information about visiting Palladium which is based in Hong Kong, please check the links below in the description box. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe, it means a lot to our channel. We are for teachers. Goodbye.